the northwestern corner of the Yucatan Peninsula is one of the least suitable places on the entire peninsula for building a city or a civilization. The west coast is significantly hotter than the east coast, lacking the cool sea breeze. Meanwhile, the northern coast is the driest part of the Yucatan. It receives less than half of the rain that's received in the rest of the Yucatan, and that even makes it technically a semi-arid environment. That means that it's uh, comparable in terms of annual rainfall to places that are in the central Mexican plateau, places that are filled with cactuses and sand much of the year, a semi-desert. Besides being very hot and very dry, geologists have determined that the northwestern corner of the Yucatan is sinking at a rate of about one meter every thousand years. Uh, the Maya arrived there some almost 3,000 years ago, so there would have been some more land there than there is today, but it seems that they didn't really build anything there either. There's not really many ruins in that part because it's a, it's a big mangrove swamp. It's uh, filled with salt water and crocodiles. There's no drinking water there. You can't practice agriculture there, except on a few barrier islands where people still live to this day. If we head a bit inland, we see that eventually this swampy environment shifts into something more suitable for human settlement and habitation. And right at the edge, of that boundary, we see the ancient city of Tzibul Chaltun. Tzibul Chaltun was built where it was built because it's close to the sea. That gives it access to the other parts of the Yucatan Peninsula, as well as lands further away in Central America and in Central Mexico. Tzibul Chaltun is one of the oldest Maya cities in the region, and it was first settled probably around 1000 BC, although it becomes kind of hard to tell at that point. The city first started to really prosper uh, after the post-classic period, so the early classic period, about 150 AD. Around 100 or 150 AD, a lot of people seem to have moved to Tzibul Chaltun, and one of the reasons that they probably did this was because of this huge cenote that's in the middle. A cenote is like a sinkhole, and this one happens to be some 40 meters deep, that's about half a football field deep, and it's filled with water. When I was there, it was completely full and it just looked like a puddle, but I, archaeologists have excavated it and they found uh, in the bottom uh, that there were all kinds of things thrown in there uh, for many, many years since ancient times. There were all kinds of artifacts, probably offerings, as well as bodies of human beings who may have been sacrifices and lots of blue pigment. Uh, there was a pigment known as Maya blue associated with the rain god Chuck and they threw this in uh, they think in times of drought as an offering to the rain god to try to make it rain. Surrounding this central plaza of Zibul Chaltun, there are several pyramids, uh, important buildings for administration and probably palaces where rulers of the city lived. Extending outwards from the central plaza of Zibul Chaltun, there are some Sakbeob. A Sakbe means a white road in Mayan, and these were ceremonial roads that were covered in plaster and one was excavated when I was there and the other was still covered in trees, but you could see that it was very, very wide. And these would have been important for ceremonies and to connect Tzibul Chartun to other important Mayan cities in the region. The most important temple in Tzibul Chartun is called the Temple of the Seven Dolls, named after seven somewhat creepy clay figurines that were found inside of the temple. When archaeologists first started working on the site in the 1940s, the Temple of the Seven Dolls was covered with stones, and in fact there was a newer, larger pyramid built on top of it. But some part of this had collapsed, exposing the Temple of the Seven Dolls, which was inside, and it originally had some very nice stucco decorations on it that are not visible anymore. But uh, they excavated this, they cleared away the rubble, and they found this very well-preserved Temple of the Seven Dolls which has a very unique shape. It has a very unique architecture. Some say that it has a tower that looks kind of like the tower at Palenque. The Temple of the Seven Dolls has a rather unique shape for a Maya pyramid, that is, four equal sides. Another pyramid that has that shape is the Castillo, or the Temple of Kukulkan in Chichen Itza. And it's thought that the pyramid at Zibul Chaltun uh, would have looked like this with the outer layer on top of the Temple of the Seven Dolls when it was still intact. And, in fact, 
Chichen Itza is centered around this pyramid and a cenote, just like in Zibul Chaltun. So it could be that Zibul Chaltun was the inspiration for Chichen Itza, which is largely a later city. If you're wondering what the third equilateral pyramid is, it's in Mayapan, which was built as a copy of Chichen Itza. I went to Zibul Chaltun to try to film it, and I found that one part of the city was closed for excavations, that the museum was closed for renovations, and I encountered some other unexpected problems, which you'll see in a moment. Hello, and welcome to Tzibel Chaltun, which is a old Mayan site from beginning in the pre-classical period that was inhabited through uh, the classic and terminal classic, and then around the year 950 or so, it was abandoned uh, during the Mayan collapse. There is a pyramid here. I'll show you that in a second. Um, a couple of other structures. This is uh, in the northern coast of the Yucatan. And when the Spanish got here, one of the first things that they did uh, was to start uh, making buildings, churches, to uh, preach to the Mayans and convert them to Christianity. And uh, this is one of the sites where they did that. And they built this uh, very large open air church and they used to preach. And the people would be gathered here outside and the uh, Franciscan friar or uh, some other missionary would be there lecturing the Maya in Mayan. They all became fluent in Mayan as soon as they arrived here. That was uh, part of their missionary work. And they would uh, preach and convert people to Christianity and uh, teach them how to pray and all that stuff. This was built, of course, uh, using stones from a pyramid. Here we have a plaza. And I think I can already hear a little bit of an acoustic effect here. Yep, that's a, a strange echo that comes from the staircase being uh, located in a square like this. There would have been buildings on top of these, of course. Um, could have been houses, elite houses for the rulers of the city or administrative offices. It's a very, very large building here. It stretches all the way from that end to that end. And over there, you can uh, you can see some of the columns of uh, the buildings that would have been on top. The cenote is closed. You can see you wouldn't want to swim in there anyway. Uh, someone local here told me that it's uh, an infamously dirty and unpleasant cenote to swim in. Looks like there's a temple next to the cenote. And uh, this was a sacrificial cenote. And uh, there were lots of uh, objects found in there. There probably still are lots of uh, objects in there that were made as offerings, including human sacrifices. There's probably some people down there. Chichen Itza is famous for having the Grand Cenote of Chichen Itza, which was used by Mayans all over the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, even in the time of the Spanish, uh, there was a drought and someone from the western coast of the Yucatan, a group of people, decided to make a human sacrifice at the cenote of Chichen Itza and walk halfway across the peninsula to there to do it, because it was considered a very important one. But the cult of the cenote was not limited to Chichen Itza, it was also uh, to be found in many other cities such as this one, Tzibul Chaltun. Over here we have that very long building.
very, very long building, and there's something in the middle of it. Let's climb this and see what's there. This looks like the, perhaps the remains of a previous building, or perhaps a tomb. Yes, it looks like a tomb, or an entrance to the underworld, perhaps. It's locked, but you can see that there's rooms and chambers in there with uh, vaulted Mayan arch ceilings. Lots of wasps as well seem to have built a nest there. Here on the top, we have the remains of a really enormous room. Several rooms, actually, that would have been exposed uh, to this main plaza here. I'm not sure what the uh, function of the structure would have been. You see another pyramid over there, another structure. And that one looks like it hasn't been excavated at all. more stuff on this side. Okay, going through this room to the back. Looks like there's platforms, walls, some kind of rooms. The floors here are tilted at a weird angle. Not sure what that would have been used for. And down there, it looks like a much lower elevation than where I am now. There's the jungle floor. I see all kinds of, of rocks there. Rubble, remains of structures. Of course, uh, like many other sites in Mesoamerica, Sibyl Chaltoon has only been partially excavated, almost stepped down there. You have to watch your step in these places. Oh, look, they made a little extra staircase. It's a bit warm today. Always a bit warm around here. Now in the rainy season, uh, it often rains in the afternoon around four o'clock or five. And um, I thought that it would be cloudier. No, it is pretty cloudy. There's a lot of clouds, but uh, when you're in the sun, It's uh, just brutal. This is a, a very old structure. This is one of the pre-classic buildings, at least at its core. I think that uh, may have been built over later on. This is the main pyramid of the site, and uh, there would have been a small temple here. There's a staircase leading up, and also two other uh, side staircases that sort of uh, zigzag between the levels. We'll both get to the top. There's a giant lizard over there. It just uh, disappeared into that hole. I guess that's his house. Oh yeah, he's in there, I can see his tail. There's a sign pointing this way to follow this path. 
through the jungle. Let's see what's at the end of this path, because right now it just looks like plants. Oh, over there in the forest you can see there's a, a bowl that would have been used for grinding corn probably. Some cool air plants here. These are parasitic, I think. Although the tree seems to be doing, uh, no, well, it's not doing that great. Oh, there's the unexcavated pyramid. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. Something in that pile of branches. Uh, yeah, that's a... That's a giant pile of rocks in the jungle. Whatever it was has completely collapsed and deteriorated, and you can see over there and over there, there's a lot more unexcavated stuff. There's a lot of moths here. At some point, uh, at some point in the classical period, um, Tikal and uh, the other cities of the Petén region in Guatemala were so important that they had a uh, great influence over uh, the entire Mayan world and a lot of their uh, architectural features spread even this far north into the Yucatán. And here you can see this uh, smooth uh, slope and this sort of uneven uh, construction of the Acropolis. It's very typical of that region, yet found here as well. And it looks like there's some some interesting patterns here uh, among the rocks. You can see that there's this sort of a zigzag pattern that goes uh, along here. Now, I'm not supposed to go over there. There's a bunch of no trespassing signs, so I won't get any closer, uh, lest the goblins take offense. Another temple, it looks like the top hasn't been excavated. And th this is all one big platform, it looks like. Oh, this is a, a very wide sock bay. Uh, ceremonial processional road, sock meaning white and bay meaning road. The white road, the sock bay. These can go on for miles and miles and miles and connect cities uh, for great distances through the jungle. Uh, there's a cactus here. Feels very much, oh, and a very, very terrible foul odor. Very jungly odor and uh, cactus. There's uh, definitely a dead animal somewhere in the jungle nearby, which uh, reminds me of an interesting fact about cacao. Cacao is uh, difficult to grow on a farm. Uh, the Spanish tried, but it didn't work. And that's because to pollinate cacao, um, it relies on a bunch of small insects and gnats and uh, things that live in a jungle uh, where there are tons of uh, rotting, decaying plants and animals all around. And the flies that live off of that are the ones that pollinate the cacao. So if you want to grow cacao, you have to plant it in a pre-existing forest. You can't just uh, clear a field and plant some cacao trees. It won't work. Don't try it. Very, very large uh, rooms.
It absolutely stinks here. Very foul, thick jungle air. Lots of uh, decaying plants and animals. Looks like there may have been a fire in this room. Here's some kind of bowl to catch water. That was uh, something that was commonly found on uh, at religious altars. Looks like this was recently much more overgrown. Besides the animals, the plants also do their part in destroying these ruins and causing the arches to collapse. But it looks like um, a significant port portion of this arch is uh, still intact, and you can see the style. There were many different styles of uh, building the arches. This one just seems very loosely cobbled together. All right, let's get back on the sock bay and see What's at the other end of it? Although you can see that it uh, actually continues for in that direction, probably for miles and miles. Ah, oh, there's a breeze here. Nice, cooling breeze in the in the plaza. I can see why the Mayans uh, like to create these large plazas. It lets the air circulate a lot better. There's another. Uh, stepped platform and you can see that there's this snaky pattern of little rocks that uh, winds through on the outside of the building. This looks like a Stella that has collapsed. Doesn't look like there's anything readable on it. I'm back at the main plaza, and there's the church and the very long building, another building here, and here is an altar. And you can see that in this altar there's the little uh, snaky pattern of small rocks, but it looks like it ends here in a circle, and like there was something carved there before, some sort of statue or something. Here it is again. Uh, behind me are a few uh, stella, and I believe that these have been uh, eroded. You can't you can't see what's on them or read it, but uh, there's a couple of platforms all in a row with uh, those on them. And over here, there's another one, and it looks like they removed the Stella and put it at the base of the stairs. Yeah, you can't really see what was on there, but there is a uh, an altar to make offerings to whatever used to be on there. When, when you see this thing from the end of the sock bay, uh, it looks a lot smaller than it is. And uh, that doorway is actually maybe twice twice my height. And uh, from a distance, it looks like it's a normal sized doorway. So as you start walking uh, down, um, there's a strange effect where you start to realize the scale of it and you end up walking further and further and still not reaching it. Uh, and it ends up being this really large thing that you didn't expect. It was at about that time that my camera overheated and turned off before I could get any good footage of the Temple of the Seven Dolls. And I, uh, soaked in sweat and feeling like I was about to have a heat stroke myself, stood around there for some time waiting for my camera to cool off, which didn't happen. Seeing that the park was about to close anyway, I decided to head back to the main entrance to try to find a bottle of water. And as the park was about to close, the people who sold water had already left. Unfortunately, I could not find any, but in a heat-induced delirium, I did walk over to the gift shop and managed to pick up this t-shirt, which uh, highlights another interesting feature about the Temple of the Seven Dolls, which I did not mention before. And that is because it is perfectly aligned north, south, east, and west. Uh, on the equinoxes, the sun appears to rise exactly in the east and sets exactly in the west. So that means that when you're standing on the sock bay and you look at the Temple of the Seven Dolls, 
the sun appears to rise perfectly through the doorway. Just like this. And that happens on both equinoxes, not just the spring equinox, but also the autumn equinox. So there you have it, Sybil Chaltsun. This was Pyramid Review. I'm trying out a new format because people were asking for some more information about the pyramids besides just whatever I happen to remember while I'm walking around filming them. So let me know in the comments below if you like this or if you want me to go back to the old way of making my videos. Stay tuned, I will be coming out with many more about the Maya of the Northern Yucatan.